2023 SIOP Annual Conference. We are so pleased to welcome you to Boston. And to those of you tuning into the live stream, thanks for joining us. This year's program promises a variety of compelling and captivating educational content and social events. Be sure to download our annual conference app, Whova, pronounced Whova for those who are wondering, to facilitate your in-person experience as well as to take advantage of virtual sessions. I highly encourage you to review the program on Whova and plan ahead uh, <clears throat> to make the most of your conference experience over the next few days. SIOP strives to ensure that all attendees have a satisfying annual conference experience. Part of that experience is to help ensure your safety. First, I'll point to out the emergency exits in this room at the back. Um, as well, uh, it is a, as well so that you know, it is a requirement of the city of Boston to make this announcement during educational programming. So for those of you who are presenting this week, uh, please begin your session with a similar safety announcement. Also pertaining to your safety, please check the health and safety section in Whova or on the SIOP conference website for COVID precautions and other helpful information to ensure a positive experience for all of us at the conference. I'd like to now share with you some of the inclusive practices available at the conference. First, we are in the Islamic holy month of Ramadan, concluding this Friday, April 21st. There is a prayer room available for those who are observing the holiday. There is also a Ramadan meal room with food accommodations for those who opted in when registering for this conference. Additionally, we are offering a reflection and recharge room, a lactation room, and inclusive bathrooms. Please see the on-site guide for details and locations. Finally, please note that SIOP members Betsy Schoenfeld and Peggy Stockdale continue to serve as SIOP's ombuds. While we hope their expertise is not needed, they are available here in Boston for the duration of the conference to assist attendees with issues related to SIOP's anti-harassment policy. Information on both can be found on Whova again. We hope you can maximize your annual conference experience through these offerings. We look forward to an exciting and enjoyable week here in Boston. And now I'd like to welcome Neil Schmidt, SIOP Fellowship Chair, to the stage. Good evening, I'm Neil Schmidt. I'm this year's Fellowship Committee Chair. Uh, and I'd like to take a moment, though, to begin by thanking my committee, composed of 11 SIOP fellows, uh, pictured on the screen, or they should be. Um, I also want to thank the SIOP staff, uh, who were very helpful whenever I had trouble with various aspects of software or procedure. Um, also want to recognize the committee members. Together, we reviewed uh, vitae, personal statements, and endorsements of 36 nominations we received during the nomination period. I'm indebted to the committee members for their careful consideration of these materials and our collegial discussions. Uh, the SIOP fellowship process begins with a nomination for a deserving colleague. Uh, from there, the nominations all undergo a thorough review process from all the members of the SIOP Fellowship Committee. Uh, following this and several rating uh, periods, uh, fellowship is bestowed on SIOP members who have made outstanding contributions to research, practice, teaching, service, and administration in our field. This year, 32 exceptional I.O. psychology professionals are recognized as SIOP Fellows. And now I'm thrilled to introduce our 2023 class of SIOP Fellows. Dr. Larissa Lacey Barber is an internationally recognized leader in occupational health psychology research. Her research on workplace telepressure has shaped academic and popular news discussions about how the felt need to respond immediately to work emails and texts can be detrimental to work recovery and feelings of burnout. Dr. Michael N. Bazigos has published multiple McKinsey Quarterly articles and authored chapters in two forthcoming PSYOP series books. 
He has presented at six PSYOP annual conferences and the Leading Edge Consortium. Recent papers exemplify his creative, evidence-based approach to old problems at enterprise scale and willingness to share ideas. Dr. John Binning has made significant contributions to science, teaching, and practice. Most widely known is his article with G.V. Barrett on the concept of validity. He teaches his graduate courses as though the students are supporting a client organization and runs the personnel psychology course as a professional development program. Dr. Sylvia Bonaccio's research focuses on workplace inclusivity of employees living with disabilities, anxiety, and emotions in personnel selection and advice in decision making. She has published 37 journal articles, co-authored 12 book and encyclopedia chapters, and made 68 conference presentations. She has served as chair of the Canadian Society for I.O. Psychology. Dr. Thomas Britt has published multiple books and articles addressing how deployments affect the mental health of service members. He is editor of Military Psychology and published more than 100 articles in leading journals. He has also worked with healthcare professionals working during the pandemic, NASA personnel, and the intelligence community. Dr. Nathan Carter's work on personality and measurement has earned him two National Science Foundation grants, university-wide and society awards, and was published extensively in top outlets. His work has been published in major handbooks and cited approximately 3,600 times with an H index of 31. Dr. Melissa A. Clark has advanced the field's understanding of how various work and non-work factors impact employee well-being. Her research includes 45 peer-reviewed journal publications and 10 chapters. Her articles have appeared in top-ranked I.O. psychology journals and have been highlighted in news outlets. She has also received awards for mentoring. Dr. J. Michael Crant researches workplace dynamics, focusing primarily on proactive personality and behavior at work. He is one of the creators of the Proactive Personality Scale, the most frequently used measure of a proactive disposition in the organizational literature. His work has been cited more than 20,000 times. Dr. Marcus Crede focuses on the relationship between individual differences and performance in work, leadership, and academic settings. He has received the PSYOP Joyce and Robert Hogan Award for Personality and Work Performance, an honorable mention for the William A. Owens Scholarly Achievement Award, and the Journal of Managerial Psychology Best Paper Award. Dr. Dana Glenn Dunleavy launched the Association of American Medical Colleges Professional Readiness Exam, Preview, a situational judgment test for medical school admissions, and leads research and development for residency selection and medical school admissions. She writes with co-authors from the medical education community, building recognition and appreciation of industrial psychology across disciplines. Dr. Brian Edwards has published impactful work in change and development at multiple levels, human resource management and research methods. In addition to his numerous volunteer leadership roles, he has also served as an associate editor of Journal of Applied Psychology and has served on multiple editorial boards. He has secured nearly $2 million in research funding from various public and private agencies. Dr. Alexander P.J. Ellis focuses on three streams of research, examining how groups and teams function in organizations, investigating counterproductive work behavior, and examining the intersection of demographics and expression of emotion in organizations. He has published 40 peer-reviewed articles, been cited 6,200 times, and has an H index of 30. Dr. Amir Erez has published 45 peer-reviewed articles, four book chapters, and three practice-oriented articles, including Harvard Business Review and The Psychologist. His research focuses on how positive moods and personality influence individuals' thought processes, motivation, and work behaviors. His research has been reported in media outlets in the U.S. and around the world. Dr. Scott Erker is a global expert in integrated talent management, talent acquisition, assessment, leadership development, talent analytics, 
job architecture, and strategic workforce planning. He has held leadership roles in global consultancies and has been responsible for sales, product management, client program implementations, solution architecture, and client success. Dr. Allison Alley Gabriel examines how employees promote their well-being at work and home, exploring topics related to emotions, motivation, relationships, and experiences unique to women at work, specifically women's health and motherhood. She has published 70 peer-reviewed articles and consistently translates her research for the popular press. Dr. Karen Goldberg has served as a testifying or consulting expert on more than 50 employment matters. Her work addresses measurement of sexual harassment climate, factors affecting sexual harassment training effectiveness, how gender proportions influence perceptions of sexual harassment, and how gender and self-esteem interact to affect perceptions of same-gender harassment. Dr. Nigel Gaynol, as a practitioner and academic, has worked to enhance the quality of psychological measurement in industry and promote analytical approaches to human resource management. He is a director of research and ethics and a program director at Goldsmiths, University of London, and he is an advisor to Podium Assessment Systems. Dr. Astrid Holman has made research contributions in work diversity, deviance, and nonconformity. Her main research focuses on the role of differences between individuals in shaping processes in teams and contextual moderators that determine whether these differences help or hurt. She has published 59 papers and been cited nearly 11,000 times. Dr. Gia Jasmine Hu focuses on understanding pro-social leadership and teams. Jasmine's research addresses fundamental questions facing organizations. What leadership qualities and behaviors help improve teams' long-term effectiveness? Why, how, and when do they have pro-social impact? She also studies how remote work affects employees' work and family experiences. Dr. Jonas W.B. Long focuses on multi-level models, item response theory, adaptability, cognitive abilities, and motivation. He received the 2011-2012 Innovation Award from the German Society of Psychology, the 2019 Generette Award for Excellence, in the Study of Individual or Group Assessment, and the 2020 Joyce and Robert Hogan Award for Personality and Work Performance. Dr. Robert E. Lewis has been involved in high-impact assessment programs in the federal sector and multinational organizations. Recently, he pursued field research that tracks the success of leaders identified as high potential through multiple leadership transitions and assessment centers. He was inaugural chair of SIOP's Institutional Research Committee. Dr. Dong Leo has earned a strong reputation for quantity and quality of his scholarship about event system theory and employee proactive and counterproductive behaviors. His research has led to impactful publications in top psychology and management journals. He has won numerous awards for both teaching and research. Dr. Tony S. Locklear serves as expert witness and consultant to counsel in employment discrimination, harassment, and wage hour cases for defendants and plaintiffs. Her publications and presentations cover job analysis, pay equity, criminal history screening, AI-enhanced assessment technology, HR process audits, proactive monitoring of employment disparities, and experts' role in litigation. Dr. Lauren Mueller's ability to apply I.O. knowledge and methods to unique applied research questions stands out as exceptional. He has authored several notable articles and book chapters on standard setting, alternate assessments, and test security. His work on standard setting is cited in the most recent edition of PSYOP's Principles for the Validation and Use of Personnel Selection Procedures. Dr. Jennifer Nargan focuses on leadership, teams, and the future world of work. She has 26 publications appearing in key applied psychology and management journals. Her work is cited more than 4,200 times on the web of science and 13,000 times on Google Scholar. She has published several highly cited meta-analysis. Dr. Christopher Nye focuses on three areas, employment selection and assessment, quantitative research methods, and the influence of individual differences in the workplace. 
He has published 50 articles and 11 books or chapters and received more than $1 million in funding from federal funding agencies and private organizations. Dr. David Oliver built a next-generation talent management strategy for PepsiCo Foods North America, consisting of six strategic talent pools across all functions. The strategy delivers curated, accelerated development for 1,000 high-potential leaders annually, including formal programs, coaching, executive spotlight series, and enhanced visibility for next-level promotions. Dr. Daniel Sackow's key contribution to the I.O. field is the education and development of master-level students. He is director of the Organizational Effectiveness Research Group, a campus-based consulting practice. He and his students have presented at dozens of conferences and published 45 papers in numerous outlets. Professor Valerie Sessa researches leadership development in college students, continuous learning, teams, and employee attitude constructs and measurement. Her work has been cited nearly 4,700 times and has an H index of 24. She participates in PSYOP committees, reviews for several journals, and has served in leadership roles at Center for Creative Leadership and Montclair State University. Dr. Lauren Simon studies individual and social factors influencing career success and fostering inclusive workplaces, including individual differences, employee onboarding and adjustment, and leadership. She received the Innovative Teaching Award from the Academy of Management and the Remote Hybrid Teaching Commendation and Pandemic Teaching Innovation Grant from the University of Arkansas. Dr. Michael C. Sturman is a professor of human resource management in Rutgers School of Management and Labor Relations. His research examines the prediction of individual job performance over time, the influence of compensation systems, and the use of HR analytics. He is formerly an associate editor for the Journal of Applied Psychology, a former editor of the Cornell Hospitality Quarterly, and currently serves on the editorial boards of Journal of Applied Psychology, Journal of Management, and Organizational Research Methods. Dr. Joban Min Swin has been in senior management for more than 20 companies. His I.O. research, written in English, has been cited nearly 1,300 times, more than 4,700 times for his Chinese articles, and his books more than 36,600 times. He has authored or co-authored more than 27 books. This brings the total number of PSYOP fellows to 570. I encourage each of you to read more details on the fellow's individual achievement in the PSYOP uh, Salutes brochure, which is available at the back of the room, or on the Whova app. Uh, congratulations to the 2023 class of PSYOP fellows. Thank you. And now I'd like to welcome the Recognition Awards Chair, Gina Cox. I'm Gina Cox. Uh, I am a leadership advisor, a coach, and an author, and I've been a member of PSYUP for more than 25 years, which is insane, but I have that little fancy thing on my badge. And I've never been more sure than this year um, that the work that we do really does make a difference uh, in workplaces. One of the many ways I served the society this year was as chair of the awards committee, along with co-chair John Kello. Chairs in training, Zen Zhang and Kimberly French. And an amazing group of group leads that you see on the screen. We've also had support from each of the individual subcommittee chairs. And you know there are about 200 volunteers uh, of you in this group and this uh, organization that support the work of the awards committee. And they all were involved in reviewing the awards that led to the selection of the winners we will honor tonight. This year, 32 outstanding IO psychology professionals 
are being honored with awards, grants, and scholarships. Please take a moment to review the names and accomplishments of all awardees in the 2023 SIOP Salutes brochure, which is available in print at the back of the room, as well as digitally on Uva. Please also note in the salute the names of all 200, approximately 200, dedicated awards committee members that are listed on the last page of the document. We're really proud to see SIOP members making amazing contributions to the field. We encourage you to personally congratulate this year's winners on their achievements. And now I'm pleased to present the 2023 Distinguished Award winners. The practice of industrial and organizational psychology. Dr. Michael A. Campion is the ultimate scientist practitioner working in both worlds, contributing to hundreds of organizations as well as being a distinguished professor. He is unique in using his consulting as opportunities to discover improvements in practice and then sharing that knowledge widely to the PSYOP community through publications and presentations. There are two recipients of the Distinguished Scientific Contributions Award, which recognizes outstanding scientific work in industrial and organizational psychology. One of our recipients is Dr. Miriam Ares. Dr. Ares has published more than 100 journal articles and chapters and eight books. She served as Applied Psychology Editor, Counsel for the Promotion of Women in Science and Technology Chair, Faculty of Industrial Engineering and Management Dean, and is currently Vice Dean for the Technion MBA program. Our other recipient of the Distinguished Scientific Contributions Award is Dr. Joel Brockner, who has been cited nearly 33,000 times, with many of these being formative theoretical papers that are highly influential years after publication. He is an active participant in conferences and colloquia and won the 2020 Distinguished Scholarly Contributions to Management Award from the Academy of Management. The Distinguished Teaching Contributions Award recognizes sustained experience in a position requiring substantial teaching responsibilities. Dr. Lisa Finkelstein has taught for more than 25 years at undergraduate and graduate levels, publishing with 37 graduate and three undergraduate students and serving on 70 thesis and dissertation committees. She has received excellent teaching evaluations, multiple university awards, and recently has been awarded a prestigious presidential teaching professor position. SIOP also recognizes individuals who have made significant early career contributions to the science or practice of IO psychology. Lieutenant Commander Michael W. Natali is the recipient of the Distinguished Early Career Contributions in Practice Award. Lieutenant Commander Natali has demonstrated incredible impact across the military services as well as the aerospace and technology industries. He is advancing IO practice in selection, training, evaluation, and aerospace medicine in the Navy across the Department of Defense and through collaborations with industry and academic partners. Dr. Fadul K. Mata is the recipient of the Distinguished Early Career Contributions in Science Award. Dr. Mata has an impressive research record in A-tier publications and has an H index of 20. In addition, his work on fairness variability provides novel insights on how it impacts employee performance and well-being above average levels of such experiences. Reviewers noted that Dr. Mata's work on issues of leader member exchange and justice are theoretically sophisticated and empirically rigorous. The inaugural Wayne Cassio Scientist Practitioner Award recognizes a PSYOP member whose career exemplifies the scientist practitioner model in IO psychology. Dr. Eduardo Salas is a distinguished scientist and an impactful practitioner and has dedicated his career to bridging those two worlds. He has a passion for using the science to make a difference in organizations by providing evidence-based guidance in teamwork, safety, team training, and learning and development. Congratulations to all winners. And now, please join me in welcoming John Kello, the co-chair for scholarships and grants. Uh, 
I am indeed, said John Kello. I'm a professor emeritus of Iostochology at Davidson College. For those who may not be familiar with Davidson College, it's a small liberal arts undergraduate institution that um, has earned several distinctions, two of which I'll mention. One is that we grow pretty good basketball players. And second, we grow pretty good Iowa psychologists too, quite a few of whom are here this evening. I, uh, I've helped with one of those distinctions, not with both, I assure you. So this past review cycle, uh, award cycle, I served as co-chair with Gina and um, am comfortable, more than comfortable, that the future of the awards process is in very, very good hands because this year we had as our chairs in training, Zin Zhang and Kim French, as Gina mentioned, and they are fully prepared and then some to take on the co-chair role that Gina and I have enjoyed over this, this last cycle. The awards process is very complex. It's challenging in many ways, and it's extraordinarily valuable as a service to PSYOP. So I'm proud that we have been able to do the modest amount that we have been able to do, but Zen and, and Kim, again, are fully prepped, having gone through the chair and training process with us this past year. They are dedicated and talented, and happily, their chairs in training are also dedicated and talented. You can see Jacqueline Koopman and Denise Owens. I um, want to underscore one very important thing that Gina said, and that is if you think about the roughly 200 individuals that it takes to go through this process and make informed and, and valid and supportive and accurate decisions about awardees for the 32 awards. It's an extraordinary amount of work, requires a great deal of teamwork and coordination. And I'm very happy to underscore, again, Gina's point that each of those roughly 200 participants in the process, including group leads, um, including subcommittee chairs, subcommittee members, uh, everyone deserves strong acknowledgement from this collective body for the work that they do in our mutual support. I um, want to add my congratulations to the 2023 Distinguished Award winners. We invite these Distinguished Award winners to the VIP area. My instructions tell me to gesture toward the VIP area. So this is John Kello gesturing toward the VIP area. Uh, we will have photos and a champagne toast at the end of this plenary. So as we conclude the 2023 award cycle, we are in the midst of launching the 2024 cycle. So um, if you're not familiar with uh, the 32 PSYOP awards, please um, go on the PSYOP Foundation website. You will see each award listed. You will see detailed information re regarding the criteria for each award. And we encourage you very strongly, please take the time to nominate a well-deserving colleague, perhaps uh, even someone you don't know personally, but whose work you admire. And as we assume that you admire your own work, self-nominations are welcomed as well. So thank you. And now please help me welcome Nancy Tippins, Foundation President, to the stage. Good evening, everyone. You probably expected to see Milt Hockle standing up here in front of you tonight. <laughs> I am clearly no Milt Hockle. I wish I were. Uh, after 14 years of serving as the president of the PSYOP Foundation, that's 2009 to 2022, Milt has stepped down as president of the PSYOP Foundation. He remains on the uh, board of trustees and he provides me with wise advice and counsel on a regular basis. I am very grateful that Milt is here to, to guide me. The PSYOP Foundation's Board of Trustees has been very busy since October. Uh, we've been engaged in a lot of strategic planning uh, and we have tweaked our mission statement to emphasize our focus on improving the lives of workers and the functioning of organizations. We've also set uh, 
objectives for ourselves for the coming year, and we've defined our principal activities. We're also working on ways to gather input from SIOP members like yourselves, and we're in the process of establishing and sustaining relationships with other organizations that have similar values and goals. The foundation is in good shape financially. We have over $5 million in endowments. We give a lot of that money away. We've, in just the last year, we've spent over $100,000 in grants, awards, and scholarships for the 32 awards and scholarships and, and, and grants that you see in the, in the PSYOP salutes, and that covers, over six, covers 64 people. Every organization has joyous occasions and it has very sorrowful ones. Two of our saddest events recently have been the untimely deaths of Jim Oots, a former PSYOP president, and Beth Buchanan, an IO graduate student who also happens to be the daughter of Julie Olson Buchanan. Funds have been created for each of these individuals by their friends, their family, and their colleagues to honor the memory of these outstanding individuals. The Oots Scholars Fund will support students who participate in the diver diversifying IO psychology program, and the Beth Buchanan Scholarship was created to fund students who are interested in research and well-being. There's also a time to celebrate the accomplishments of one of our own. This is one of our happiest moments. The Milton D. Hockel Incubator Fund was established to recognize Milt's extraordinary contributions to, to, to SIOP, his career, uh, his contributions to the foundation. The funds, for this, the funds from this fund will be used to support research, global initiatives that advance research-based practice. Now I want to ask you all to indulge in something that's just a little bit cheesy. So, if anybody went to graduate school with Milt, would you stand up? Oh man, I can't see anything. I hope somebody's standing up. Okay, if, if uh, you were a student of Milt's at any time, would you stand up? Oh yes, keep standing. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, if you've ever taught with Milt, were you, you were in the same institution with him. Okay, all right. Um, if you ever worked with Milt in another capacity, would you stand up? Uh, if you ever served on a committee or a board with Milt, would you please stand up? All right, we're getting a little bit better. Um, if you've ever attended a paper that Milt gave or a workshop that he gave, please stand up. Um, if you've never done any of these things but wish you had, why don't you stand up too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to let you sit down now, but um, what I'd like to ask you to do is to take out your phone. Whoops, I went too far. Back. Whoops, I've screwed up. Well, I've lost it. Um, go back. There it is. Okay, so take out your phones. Um, you can sit down and do this. And um, if you don't, can if you can't capture this on the PSYOP Salute page five is the same QR code, and click on it and look. It'll take you to the Ways to Donate site on the PSYOP Foundation, and there'll be a list of all of the funds. But I'm encouraging you to give generously to the Milton D. Hockel Incubator Fund to honor one of PSYOP's greats. If you have questions, uh, I'm sorry. If you have questions about the foundation or any of these funds, or if you have new ideas or things that you want the foundation to pay attention to, please contact me or any of the trustees. We welcome your questions and we welcome your input. And now I'd like for you all to join me in welcoming our president-elect, Tara Barron. When I tell you I've been looking forward to this all year, 
Um, so it's my honor to introduce you all to Mo Wang, our SIOP president. I took this duty very seriously, and I collected rigorous qualitative data from Mo's colleagues, students, and friends. Um, and I'm excited to tell you about some of the amazing things I learned. I also wanted to let you know that there's a tradition at the opening plenary to gently and lovingly roast the president, um, but I won't be doing that. So all of my comments are 100% um, serious. Uh, so that also means I'll only be showing serious photos, like this one, which is Mo at, sitting at Wilhelm Wundt's desk, um, or this one, which is Mo in a pizza outfit. <laughs> Very serious. So to paint a picture of Mo, let me begin with his days in graduate school. So he originally joined the PhD program at Bowling Green State University in developmental psychology. Um, but one PhD is apparently not enough for Mo. He approached the I.O. faculty about simultaneously completing the PhD in I.O. Um, and the faculty, who are pictured here attempting to throw Mo out of the program, told me that they very nearly said no. Um, and thank goodness they changed their minds. Uh, so he finished both PhDs in four years, and now he combines both fields in his studies of workplace aging and retirement. From Bowling Green, Mo moved to his first faculty job at Portland State University, um, and then on to the University of Maryland, where he earned a reputation for his incredible work ethic, brilliance, and generosity as a scholar. He also spent two years as a program officer at the National Science Foundation from 2014 to 2016, um, and having come, recently come from a term at NSF myself, I can tell you that they still talk about him with great reverence and respect, uh, so he clearly makes an impact everywhere he goes. So since 2011, Mo has been a member of the faculty at the University of Florida, uh, where he holds the Lanzalotti McKethan Eminent Scholar Chair in the Department of Management. In looking at his CV, I noticed something very concerning, uh, which is that he's been simultaneously serving as Department Chair, Associate Dean for Research, and director of the Human Resource Research Center, in addition to his incredible research productivity, um, and of course, his service to PSYOP and other professional societies. So suffice to say that Mo is extremely distinguished. Um, in fact, he even makes this gator slash dragon costume look distinguished. So as I mentioned, I talked to a lot of Mo's colleagues, friends, former students, and collaborators, and he has a lot of them, uh, to find out how he could possibly do all of this. And I asked them to describe Mo in a few words. And as you can see, the words caring, funny, sharp, and thoughtful came up over and over again. People said, Mo is hilarious whether he's trying or not. And he brings so much joy and humanity to academia. Um, they also said other interesting words, such as intense, brash, no filter, and in your face. Now, I can't reveal all of Mo's secrets here, unfortunately, but I will share a few of my favorite Mo facts. So first, Mo can do a handstand. Here's the proof. Um, second, Mo has been known to get so worked up over reviewer comments that he has to do handstands to calm himself down. One person told me that when Mo got angry, again, usually about reviewer comments, he liked to visit their office and eat all of their snacks. Um, and this happened so frequently that the person had to start hiding their snacks or he wouldn't have any left for himself. Now, as an example of what an inspiring mentor Mo is, the snack stealing habit actually gave the student this idea for a research paper in JAP about stress and unhealthy eating behavior. <laughs> So Mo is a world traveler and adventurous foodie. Here he is trying to teach his daughter Chloe about wine. Um, he also is known for organizing fun research excursions to interesting places all over the world and making friends wherever he goes, um, and always making sure there is at least one flaming ball of meat on every table. Now, of course, the best things about Mo are his wonderful wife, Arlene, and their three daughters, Zoe, Sophie, and Chloe. Arlene and Mo are lucky that they met when they did, considering that Mo refused to date anyone earlier in his career so he wouldn't be distracted from his publications. We know Arlene is a good person too because she's accepted a partner who refuses to wear shoes that are not Crocs. Several different people suggested to me that I check and make sure he's not wearing Crocs for his presidential address. So in closing, Mo is truly a special and widely beloved person who has had enormous positive impact on hundreds of collaborators, students, and admirers. And I'll leave you with these inspiring words from his colleagues. Mo is like a wizard. Whenever I encounter obstacles in our projects, he can always find a solution. 
He is one of the most generous people I know. He will do anything for his friends. And I have never seen anyone eat so many all-you-can-eat shrimp. <laughs> Sayaf, I am utterly delighted to introduce the brilliant, shrimp-loving, and in-your-face president, Mo Wang. Wow. Wow. <laughs> well, I didn't know some of the pictures existed. Um, all right, all right. So um, let's see. Uh, I need to find my page first. Wow, that was, a, that was a good introduction, Tara. Really good. All right, so um, OK, welcome, everyone. Um, I'm so glad uh, you're able to make the annual conference this year. Um, it's a really nice uh, to see everyone here. So thank you very much uh, for attending it. Um, all right. So let me see how this works. Oh, OK. Um, so as I begin um, my presidential remarks, I would like to express my gratitude to many individuals who have supported me throughout my journey to this point. So really, many people to thank. So first of all, I must express my immense gratitude to my graduate school advisors and mentors uh, in I.O. psychology. Um, really, uh, without them, I won't be here today. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll go one by one. So Mike Zicker is so open-minded and tolerant I'm sure I gave him a lot of headaches as a PhD student, um, but he still co-chaired uh, my dissertation. Uh, Scott Highhouse has always been brutally honest with me, uh, which kept me on my toes and uh, cultivated m my habits of striving for excellence in research. Uh, Steve Jacks introduced me to occupational health psychology uh, to this day, uh, this is still one of my major research areas. Uh, and uh, Milt Hako, Milt Hako is so wise and experienced. I have always gone to him uh, when I'm facing really important career decisions, uh, and he never directed me wrong. Okay, next, uh, I want to thank my I.O. colleagues uh, at all the universities that I worked at. First. Here are my I.O. colleagues uh, from uh, when I was an assistant professor at Portland State University. So Leslie Hammer, Donald Truxillo, and Bob Sinclair. I learned so much from you guys. Um, to this day, I'm extremely grateful that this was my first academic job. Um, at the University of Maryland, I was so lucky to be able to work with Michelle Gilfand, Sherry Ostrov, Paul Hanges, Hui Liao, and uh, Glad Hun. They are world-class scholars and really broadened my vision about research. So at the University of Florida, uh, I was not only welcomed by very established colleagues, Joyce Bono, Amir Erez, and John Kamen Mueller, but also were able to hire fabulous talent, such as uh, Claudiana Lanai, Brian Swider, and uh, Aaron Hill. That nurtured a really positive work environment. Thanks to them, I look forward to coming to my office every day. So finally, I would like to thank my co-authors and the former and the current PhD students and the postdocs. Well, the list is actually very long. Uh, last time I had to fill out a uh, um, conflict of interest declaration form, I had to fill 193 names. Uh, so I will not present their pictures here. Um, you know who you are, and I really love you. Thank you. All right, so now let's talk about the presidential remarks. So during the preparation process, I was indeed uh, struggling a little bit uh, to decide on the topic of my remarks. On the one hand, uh, I'm hoping to convey a forward thinking and also growth-oriented vision for SIOP, okay, for our discipline. 
On the other hand, I do not want to overlook what we accomplished during my presidential year. These achievements are fantastic and deserve to be celebrated. In the end, I decided to use this occasion to provide my personal analysis of the current IO psychology ecosystem and uh, illuminate several opportunities for our further expansion. Some of these opportunities are ex exemplified by our recent achievements, offering me segues to highlight them during the talk. So you may ask, why is it important to consider the IO psychology ecosystem? That is because ecosystems are crucial to the prosperity and the sustainability of all organisms living in them. By clarifying the significant roles of the key players in our ecosystem, we will know better about how to further develop and grow our community. So typically, when scientists study biolog uh, biological ecosystems, they tend to follow how, how energy flows in the system, which offers ways to understand the roles of different organisms. In my analysis of the IO psychology ecosystem, I will follow how knowledge flows in the system. After all, the unique professional knowledge that IOs possess is the key that distinguishes us from other disciplines. Knowledge is the energy for our field. Accordingly, the core of the IO psychology ecosystem features this knowledge flow triangle. It has three key components, knowledge generator, knowledge translator, and the knowledge consumer. If we consider the flow of knowledge supply, it goes this way. The knowledge generator supplies the knowledge to the translator and then to the consumer. Sometimes the knowledge generator can also directly supply the knowledge to the consumer. If we consider the flow of knowledge demand, the demand uh, of the knowledge consumer can be posed to the generator through the translator, but sometimes the knowledge consumer can also directly demand knowledge from the generator. The equilibrium reached by the knowledge supply and the demand in this triangle decides the size of our ecosystem. Reaching equilibrium means that the system can self-sustain. If one of the components expands without the other two following suit, the expansion would not be sustainable. For instance, if the knowledge consumer demands increase but the knowledge generator is unable to meet such demands, directly or indirectly, the new demands may shift to other disciplines and eventually disappear. Therefore, the key to expand the IO psychology ecosystem is to nurture all three components to ensure balanced and sustainable growth. Now, Let's zoom in and consider the players in each of the circles. The typical players in the knowledge generator circle includes IO psychologists who reside in universities, research institutes, R&D functional units, in for-profit and non-for-profit organizations, and also independent researchers. So how should we expand our knowledge generator? Two essential things are required. The first is financial resources, which can come from public and private in investment, such as those from federal and state funding agencies, private foundations, and corporate support. The second is human capital, which relies on the pipeline of undergraduate and graduate students entering IO psychology as a research discipline. Increasing the quality and the quantity of student recruits for IO psychology is critical for expanding the knowledge generator. On this front, SIP has undertaken several important activities during the past year to expand the knowledge generator. First, SIP leadership and the government, government relations advocacy team, also known as the Great Committee, met with representatives at the National Science Foundation to advocate for IO psychologists' funding needs as they relate to the newly formed Directorate on Technology, Innovation, and Partnership. Second, led by Dr. Larry Martinez, 
Disciple device, uh, Diversifying I.O. Psychology program is successfully completing its second year. The program aims to help racial and ethnic minority individuals, particularly undergraduate students, to learn more about I.O. Psychology as a career option. Third, SIAP successfully launched its virtual programming for the Great China region. The program, chaired by Dr. Daisy Chang, has already had 25 universities registered, which can impact more than 2,000 masters and PhD level students in IO psychology related degrees in East Asia. Finally, Drs. Richard Dalau and Pradenia Parisha are leading a task force exploring the possibility of launching a virtual IO educational program for the South Asia region. A pilot workshop has already resulted from this effort. Now, let's turn to the knowledge consumer. The typical players in this circle include for-profit and not-for-profit organizations that care about business bottom lines, employee well-being, and uh, compliance to work-related laws and regulations. This circle also includes policymakers and the general public. The policymakers consume I.O. knowledge for work and employment-related policymaking at federal or local levels. The general public can benefit from I.O. knowledge to make their work and career more productive and enjoyable. So how should we expand our knowledge consumer? We need to actively engage in strategic outreach and long-term relationship building with the potential consumers. It is crucial to demonstrate the relevance of I.O. knowledge to address their pressing needs. In this regard, SIAP has made significant strides in the past year. First, in partnership with the Department of Justice Office of Community-Oriented Policing Services, also known as COPS, SIAP will work to support the effectiveness of law enforcement agencies by promoting evidence-based workforce solutions such as recruitment, hiring, leadership development, training, and stress reduction. This achievement was made possible due to the efforts of Drs. Emery Ryan, Rick Jacobs, Amy Grubb, Sergeant Anna Tonello, Jennifer Renier, and the great committee led by Dr. Kristen Saboy. Second, SIPA has played a vital role in shaping federal policies on AI-based assessment. Our engagement with the EEOC on the topic of AI in hiring has resulted in multiple meetings and presentations with the EEOC commissioners, which paved the way for Dr. Nancy Tippins testimony in a January EEOC hearing as a SIAP representative on this issue. EEOC Commissioner Keith Sunderland also served as a presenter at a SIAP-sponsored SHRM webcast event in March, exploring the legal and the practical implications of using AI-based assessment in hiring. I would like to thank the members of SIAP AI Task Force, led by Dr. Chris Nye, for their great service in deepening the ties between SIAP and the EEOC. The <laughs> the regulatory forces are indeed one of the significant drivers for IO knowledge consumption. Last but not least, let's consider the role of knowledge translator. In the I.O. ecosystem, Knowledge Translator plays an essential role in ensuring that research and other forms of knowledge and effective, uh, are effectively disseminated and applied in practical settings. This can involve translating research findings into, knowledge, uh, into language and the products that are accessible to lay public, identifying relevant stakeholders and the potential users of the knowledge, and facilitating communication and collaboration between different groups. The knowledge translator can also help to ensure that the knowledge generator's research is relevant, useful, and impactful. This is particularly important for our field, 
where evidence-based practices and policies can have significant impact on people's lives. To expand the knowledge translator, we need to leverage IO psychologists who interface with internal and external clients in practice settings, as well as the IO entrepreneurs who apply IO knowledge to create new products and services. Being aware of the knowledge translator role can help pave the way. However, it is also important not to overlook IO psychologists who translate our knowledge to the broader science communities, as well as the role directly played by PSYOP. For example, doctors Fred Oswald and Tara Barron both serve on the board on human systems integration for the National Academy of Sciences. Dr. Michelle Gilfand and I both serve on the board on behavioral, cognitive, and sensory sciences. With these positions, we are able to strategically bring IO psychology knowledge to the table for public policy and practice-related issues, demonstrate IO's expertise to other scientific disciplines, and improve our field's reputation and leadership in those areas of expertise. Therefore, if you are asked to serve on these boards in the future, please say yes. Beyond the individuals, SIAP also play an important role as a knowledge translator for IO psychology. For instance, SIAP book series on organizational science translation and application, edited by Dr. Steve Kazalaski, is getting close to publish its first book. SIAP also partnered with Louis Burke to carry out the inaugural year of the SIAP Ad Advocacy Academy. The Advocacy Academy is a year-long cohort program of advocacy training, culminating in cohort members conducting meetings with congressional offices to advocate for IO science and practice in workforce development, policy, and funding. The inaugural year program has been a great success. Now, let's return to the big picture. The knowledge flow triangle does not exist in a vacuum. There are some key environment fe environmental features in the IO psychology ecosystem that are likely to shape the equilibrium of the knowledge supplies and demands in the foreseeable future. Here are three of them. First, the technological environment will continue to shape the nature of work with an increased emphasis on autonomy, flexibility, virtual work, and the instant data collection and analysis. The emergence of GPT-related human AI teaming applications will render very fast knowledge update for the IO psychology ecosystem. Second, given the birth rate differentials and the population aging trends, the workforce will become more diverse. This will require increased knowledge generation and the translation related to managing a diverse workforce. IO psychologists will need to stay attuned to the latest research to develop evidence-based practices that promote diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workplace. Finally, we're facing an increasingly polarized political environment. It is easy to get caught up in binary thinking, confirmation bias, and emotional reasoning in such an environment. I encourage our field to remain focused on our core mission in building effective organizations and promoting worker well-being. We should continue to engage in respectful dialogue, critical thinking, and evidence-based decision-making to further our mission. As I approach the end of my talk, I would like to take a moment to express my gratitude to the SIAP staff. Over the past three years, they have faced numerous challenges and have worked tirelessly to serve our members. I'm personally grateful for everything they have done to support our field for IO psychology. Thank you. So now, to wrap up, adapting what Captain Kirk said, I would like to encourage you to boldly go where no IO psychologist has gone before. Together, we will explore uncharted territories 
and push the boundaries of what is possible for the field of IO psychology. So, <laughs> live long and prosper. Stop. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, please join us in Ballroom A next door for the welcome reception. Enjoy the conference. <laughs>